All right, so welcome to our weapons demonstration. We're going to be doing uh, some various weapons from World War II for both the Axis and the Allies. Uh, we've got a pretty wide variety this year, um, including a couple of weapons that we've never had before. If at any point after they're done talking about the weapon, you've got a question, please raise your hand. There is no such thing as a stupid question. The only stupid question is the one that's not asked. So feel free to speak up, ask us anything you like. Now, we're not going to fool you and think that we know everything about everything about weapons, but we will do our best to try to answer the question for you. And if we don't know the answer, we'll try to find it out. So, do we have any questions before we get started? I'm going to warn you, some of these weapons are very, very loud. If you've got issues with your hearing, you might want to step back about 10 or 15 feet to help lessen it a little bit. I should grab my earpiece. There's been plenty of times I didn't use I'm going to turn it over and I went to, range. to my sergeant here, I, uh, Jason Gibbia. He's actually a retired Air Force Master Sergeant. Because <laughs> then I can't uh, forget He's going to talk about some of the German weapons, and then we're going to move on to the, to the Allied weapons. We're starting off with the Gewehr of 18, the Infantry Gewehr Model 1888. This was the Germany's first repeating bolt-action rifle that used a small caliber round, small caliber as in the original Mauser 1871 was an 11 millimeter. This was the first 8 millimeter rifle in the German Army, first smokeless powder using rifle in the German Army. <laughs> It fed from a five round in block clip, kind of like an M1 Garand, which was a system designed by Ferdinand Mannlicher from Austria. And it also used a Mannlicher type rotating bolt, which is different than a Mauser type. A few small differences internally. These were used in World War, well, mainly from 1888 through 1898 when the Gewehr 98 started to overtake it. They were used in World War One pretty heavily, and then they were drug out of storage again in World War II for use by the Volkswagen. And they were getting pretty much any, whatever weapons they could find. At this, those, that point of the war, things that went bad for Germany. It loads, it loads by, you actually place the entire thing in the rifle, but the end block system had some issues. You could not top off, so I fired three rounds. Okay. If I fire three no, rounds, I can't just top off. I would have to hit the button and eject my clip and then put in a fresh. And then it also had other issues. Sometimes it would not want to feed, it would bind up. So you can see why they switched to the Mauser in 1898. So I'm going to go ahead and fire the Gewehr model of 1888. Fire in the hole! Fire, fire in the hole! hole. And then he would just go ahead and drop in a new one. Mm. Mm. Similar to the 88 you just saw, um, it's chambered in 7.92 by 57 millimeter. Um, it was adopted as a standard service rifle in 1935 by the German Army. Um, it was finally developed in a long line of the Mauser military rifles. So it's been around for a very, very long time. Although it's supplemented by the semi-auto and the fully automatic rifles that you'll see later on today, um, it remained the primary German service rifle until the end of the war of 1945. There were millions of these things were captured by the Soviet army um, and were distributed widely in military aid. The, the K-98 continues to appear today in conflicts across the world as they are taken out of storage during times of war. Um, the effective range for use to serve is 500 meters for iron sights and 1,000 meters for um, optics. Um, and it's great. also a five round internal magazine. Probably. Probably. Everywhere. Probably. Uh, <laughs> there you go, go for it. Most of the snipers in the train. Yeah. Fire the hole! Oh. 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 
Sticky bowl. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, German engineering. German <laughs> engineering. <laughs> 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 Yeah, you wouldn't want that to happen when you're in battle, for sure. Yeah. Looking right down the barrel at somebody else in a misfire. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the last four. Hopefully, no more overcharged blanks. We'll get you some water whenever I'm done. Nope. See somebody in the tree line down there. You have no problem. All right, the next one is the MP40. Uh, Here we go. Like this gun. Machine oh, and yeah. pistol 40, which is a machine pistol. Oh, I wish I had that um, gun. Right. It from its predecessor, awesome. the MP38, which was in turn based on the MP36, a prototype made of machine steel. Designed in 1938 by Henrich Bulmer, which inspired from its predecessor, the MP38, was heavily used by infantrymen, paratroopers, platoon, and squad leaders on the eastern and western fronts. It, it, its advanced and modern features made it favored among soldiers and popular in countries from various parts of the world after the war. It was often erroneously called Schmeiser by the Allies despite Hugo Schmeiser's non-involvement in the weapons design and production. From 1940 to 1945, an estimated 1.1 million were produced by Irma Worke. Rate of fire is 500 to 550 rounds per minute. Effective range is 200 meters. Feed system is 32 round magazine, 64 with dual magazines. Send out the chopper. Send the chopper. I want to show the grandfather of AKs. Okay. More or less. Okay. Yeah. Anybody tell me what this is. Uh, to do it with an STG 44. A lot of people mistake this for an AK 47, yeah. and there's a good reason for that. This is the grandfather of the AK 47. When the Russians invaded Germany, they captured several of the plants that were building this weapon. And of course, Russians being what they are, they stole the plants. <laughs> And they used it as the basis for the AK-47. In fact, if you look at some of the early prototypes of the Kalishnikov, <laughs> it looks almost virtually identical to the Storm River 44. The Storm River 44 was the first modern day military weapon. Um, it used an external magazine. Uh, it was fully automatic. It had a very powerful round. Um, and Germans that were carrying it were carrying about 10 to 15 times the amount of ammunition and firepower that a standard infantryman carried when they had the car 98. Unfortunately, the gun didn't come into service early enough in the war to really make much of a difference. Well, I mean, it was a Hitler very good weapon, it, so he but they just didn't make enough of them to uh, have really any effect on the outcome of the war. It's useless. Full spectrum uh, rifles are any the questions only before label went away. Is it for sale? <laughs> <laughs> I'll trade it to you for a car. Let's put it that uh -huh. way. Uh huh. Well, I got. I got. I don't want to walk on it. Today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are these are very difficult to come by. This is a semi-automatic version uh, built from original parts. Um, that way, you don't need a class three for it. Uh, but even at that, they're extremely rare and, and hard to come by. Um, yeah. Does uh, the forty-four this one is that derived from like nineteen forty-four? Correct. That's the year it was. It was that's the year it was starting oh. to get published or oh. uh, used by the the three. The even though the prototype was actually right. designed in nineteen forty-one. <laughs> its predecessor was the MG34, which was a, a 
the entire gun was designed by uh, a company and designers who had never designed a single gun before. Is the way that this gun was manufactured. Germany was like, we want it stamped, so we'll just tell people who know how to make stamped metal things to make it. Because this was using stamped steel as opposed to machine steel. But here's the most interesting thing. The MG42 machine gun was designed by an engineer that had never oh, designed a firearm before. The uh, inventor of this uh, had built things like water, or washing machines and car parts and conveyor belts and things like that, but he never designed a firearm. So when he started building the schematics for this weapon, he used a lot of out-of-the-box thinking. He, he really broke a lot of rules when it came to designing this gun. Look at the and what he ended up building was arguably one of the most powerful light machine yeah. guns that's ever been built. It fired 1,200 rounds per minute. Can anybody tell me how many rounds per second that is? A lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> All right. So you can imagine the Allied troops, as they were storming the beaches of Normandy, having 20 bullets a second yeah. coming at them from a single machine gun. This weapon fired so fast, you couldn't hear the individual rounds go off. It earned the nickname Hitler's Buzzsaw. Because when it started shooting, it literally sounded like a buzzsaw. Or it sounded like somebody ripping a piece of paper. You couldn't hear the individual round. You also can't aim it because everything just turns fuzzy and gray. <laughs> they had no tactics to combat the 42. The MG-34 that came before this, the Allies were trained to wait for a barrel change because the MG-34s yeah. would overheat after a while. They had to switch the barrel out. Well, on an MG-34, that took a couple of minutes. And so when the Allies knew that was happening, you know, they could charge the machine gun nest and take out the machine gun. Not so much with the 42. It takes about 15 to 20 seconds to change out a barrel for a well-trained crew, which means you couldn't use that tactic. It wasn't until later on in the war that the Allies started figuring out ways to combat the 42. Usually it involved artillery or mortar rounds. <laughs> But Usually just explode them. Grenade. <laughs> so, without further ado. Oh, those are your This one's going to be fun. Oh. Hey, okay, I will walk on this one. There's always a problem with blanks when you're trying to fire them in a live weapon. Hey, I will walk home for this one though. If you're ready to try it out. <laughs> Actually, the, the Sturmger is worth more than the MG is. Oh, yeah. How much is it right now? Huh? How much would you say right now it's worth? That? Yeah. About right. five grand. Try this again. Fire in the hole! <laughs> We'll bring it back. Bebley Revolver. This has been around for a while. Uh, I don't really have much to say other than it fires six rounds like a standard revolver. Ah, come on. Originally, it was chambered in 455 Webley. Well, they decided that might be a bit much. So they went to 38 Smith & Wesson. Turns out that may or may not violate several uh, arms conventions. Hmm. <laughs> Maybe they got one more. Yep. There's only five. Yep, I only put five in because I dropped the other one. I don't know where it went. One of the fun things about this is to unload. You just grab the barrel, yep. flip it down, oh, and that's all, I want. all the brass goes flying. It's great <laughs> until you have to reload again. <laughs> With that out of the way, 
British Empire since early 1900s and was only phased out by the FAL at the very beginning of Vietnam. This actually holds 10 rounds in a detachable magazine. But because at the time they went, yeah, our troops might lose those, they were originally chained. You weren't supposed to remove them unless doing maintenance. Similar to the K98 and others, it is loaded with five round stripper clips. Let's see if I can't jam this one. <laughs> All depends on if I loaded the stripper clips right. As these are rim cartridges, they will like to jam each other. Got a little friend lock. All right, burn them. Nice mad minute. I've been working on it. <laughs> yeah. At, so. And. Should do it this time? Okay, so move this off. Whole last time. I can't listen. Fire in the hole. Yeah. It got far enough. And an interesting note on this particular rifle, this has been in my family since 1947. These were sold as war surplus through a field and stream type magazine through the NRA for $10. Yeah, find one for $10 now. It's five round, bolt action. Demonstrator and I are going to demonstrate the M1 Garand rifle. Yes. It's a 30 out 6 Springfield shot from an 8 round spring magazine. It's a gas operated system, which means the gas pressure of the round going off will help cycle the action of the rifle, yeah. enabling you to fire semi-automatically. The, the battle rifle's got a, a, a effective range out to about 500 meters, but later in the war they did put optics on some of these and make them sniper rifles. It's not as common as the Springfield rifle the sniper version, but there were some sniper version M1 Garand. Load. Neil. Burn the hole. Burn the hole. cycling the weapon manually, I was shooting the rifle semi-automatic using the gas pressure to cycle the weapon. The benefit is a, a, an American infantry squad equipped with the M1 Garand can put a lot of firepower downrange against an army that's predominantly a bolt-action rifle army. This allows American infantry to pin the element in place and other infantry groups to maneuver against the target. Any questions about the M1 Garand? By the way, this remains in active service up until the Vietnam War. Uh, uh, why is the ping? The ping is the, the sound of the steel spring magazine being cycled out of the weapon. There is um, some testimonial evidence that the Germans, when fighting Americans, would wait mm. for a rifleman's ping. Oh, well, when the American oh, rifleman learned this, they would take an empty magazine and throw it against a rock on the ground, creating that pain. <laughs> that would bring the Germans out of their positions and up to a perfect shot. Hello, bang.
Yeah. Hey, question. It's the ultimate game of hide and seek. What? Yes, sir. How to do underwater or when it got wet. You know, I don't know that. I don't know too much about it, but any weapon, small 30 caliber, what would be considered a pistol cartridge at this point now. Um, it's a 15 round magazine. Uh, the carbine actually saw service all the way through to Vietnam. Um, later versions came out with an M2, which was fully automatic. You go to the M3. Some of you have seen these massive night vision scopes that go on the front end of this thing. <laughs> pretty much renders this weapon obsolete. There's no point in putting a giant scope on this rifle. It doesn't have a very good effective range. This is Fire in the hole! Sure, most of you can name me what this is, right? Yeah. Thompson, Thompson. 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 Yes. Thompson this particular machine. model is a 1928 A1 Thompson submachine gun. They had the 1928 A1, they had the M1, and they had the M1A1. A lot of the difference in that, especially with the 1928, is you have a cuts compensator on the front end to help with muzzle rise. If any of you have shot a 45 ACP, you know it's got a lot of kick. The next thing they did was they had wells in the side of, of where your magazine goes in where you can accept drum magazines. 50 round drums to 100 round drums. This particular model with the drums was used a lot um, overseas with the Marine Corps surprisingly. And then at one point, uh, another country really, really enjoyed the 1928A1 and that was Britain. The, the SAS guys really like to use these without the horizontal grip, they like to use the vertical grip. You had more control, it's more portable. The downside of this gun, because it shoots a 45, it's freaking heavy. Um, I wouldn't want to walk a lot with this, but you can. It does shoot a 45 round, it can go semi-auto or full auto, whichever one you want to do. Uh, today we're going to go full auto. We hope we're going to go full auto. Let me put it that way. The luck we've been having today, it might not happen. Right. <laughs> Turn all. Just like this. Empty the clip already. That was bad. That was bad. Now that's a bad thing. <laughs> I thought it was going to be a little bit of 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 a usually associates a trench gun with a model 97 that's got the exposed hammer the slide comes back and busts your thumb up put your thumb too far forward has too many moving parts winchester came in and made this and said okay let's go ahead and simplify this and quit hurting people's thumbs your stevens 520s and your ethica 37s all of which do not have what the shotguns have now which is a trigger disconnect so you can do what you call slam fire. Oh, yeah. You're going to hold the trigger down, push the slide forward, and it's going to pop around on If you need to get out of a jam, cool, do it. That's what it's there for. It shoots a 12 gauge. And it's fun. Usually it's double out buck. <laughs> can't shoot slug out of it. With a 20 and a half inch barrel, you're going to feel that. It's going to suck. As far as the European theater goes, trench shotguns were hardly ever seen except for MP units usually we had an active guard of somebody. Pacific theater of operations, it's a little bit different. You take a shotgun into the jungle with buckshot, it tends to make an impact. Yeah. So I'll demonstrate just right. no over here. a little bit. This is gonna be loud.